Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Um, so today I wanted to talk about um, a question that I get asked um, regularly. Uh, it's it, There's sort of different variations on this question. Um, sometimes people ask me like, so what do you like to do? What do you do in your free time? You know, what are your hobbies? Or what do you enjoy? And um, that's not what the video is going to be about. It's actually sort of almost the opposite. And, um, you know, when people ask me those questions, I have a very difficult time answering the question because there's not a lot that I can enjoy. Um, having a chronic illness, especially one that is so limiting um, and one that affects, you know, every system of the body um, like mine, it really makes it hard to find things that you, you know, things that you can do that won't cause pain or discomfort, um, you know, that you can even physically do. Um, I, oh, I went to film school. Um, that's what I studied at the university. And due to my light sensitivity, I was no longer able to watch movies. I couldn't go to a movie theater. I can't watch, you know, TV like on a flat screen TV or anything like that. Um, so that was kind of one big thing that I lost. Um, not, I wasn't a big movie goer, but I, I obviously I did enjoy, you know, if it was a movie that I really wanted to see, I did enjoy going to see that movie or even seeing it at home. Um, and now with, you know, Netflix and all of that, we have that, you know, right at our fingertips. We can watch movies whenever we want. Um, I do have, you know, one phone that I am able to, you know, kind of watch like YouTube videos and stuff off of. But, you know, I can't extensively watch like, you know, an entire movie or anything like that. Um, you know, there are people that are, you know, that, that are big time foodies and they love to go out to different restaurants and eat. I can't do that because I'm intolerant to almost everything. Um, there are people that like to go hiking, can't do that because just my own, you know, my, my body can't withstand something like that. Um, there are things that I can do, but, you know, everything has to be modified. You know, I go for a walk every day, but if it's too hot, like, for example, like today, I don't go for my walk. I skip it. Or if it's raining or it's too cold, I skip it. Um, so the, it's, you know, I, I think sometimes people will look at sick folks like myself, you know, chronically ill people or disabled people and say, well, you're just not trying hard enough. You're not trying hard enough or you're not, um, you just don't want to do it. And it isn't that we don't want to. It's that there is, there are real consequences to um, to doing these activities and sometimes they can have long-term consequences. Um, yeah, I can make myself, you know, gluten-free brownies and, you know, have them usually during the holidays. I'll do something like that. I will suffer the consequences sometimes for months afterwards. Um, you know, yeah. Could I watch a movie or could I watch, you know, a long YouTube video? Yeah. But then I'll end up with a headache sometimes for, for the entire day. Um, so, you know, I, I think when you speak to someone and they, they're constantly sort of, you know, shooting down ideas or it feels like they're shooting down these ideas or suggestions that you're giving them, um, it's not that they're not good suggestions. It's just that it may not be doable. And sometimes, sometimes, yeah, we do push ourselves to do these things and we suffer the consequences, but we're okay with it. Um, but other times we just sort of think to ourselves, you know, it's just not worth it this time. So one thing that I've kind of gotten into recently, um, I sort of go through these phases where I get in, really into buying a certain thing. Like I've gotten uh, really into buying handbags in the past because, you know, I don't have to try on a handbag. You know, when it comes to clothing, I'm so thin that clothes is often too big and not flattering. So, you know, I'm not really... I mean, I have a lot of clothes, but I'm not really big into buying expensive or nice clothes, you know, because I just don't want to deal with that. Um, so handbags was sort of a good solution for me. And that was one thing that I kind of got into for a while. And then after a while, I was like, you know, I don't need these, these handbags. 
Um, but right now I'm kind of going through sort of a jewelry phase and um, I've been really, you know, into jewelry and maybe increasing my collection. I didn't have like a huge collection of jewelry, but um, I was kind of like, oh, I want to, you know, I'm getting into gold jewelry. And so, you know, I figured that's a pretty safe thing to sort of enjoy and to sort of um, get into. It's kind of like the handbags. I don't really need to worry too much about how it's going to, you know, how it's going to fit. I mean, I, I kind of do with certain pieces, but I was like, oh, you know, a necklace should be fine or, you know, some earrings or something like that. Um, but then, you know, little by little, you know, I started to find that I was allergic to some earrings, um, for whatever reason, you know, some gold earrings are fine. Some gold earrings are not. And so then I have like an intense reaction to it. You know, currently I have one ear that's been burning for, you know, over a day because I put the wrong kind of earring in my ear, you know? So when I think about that, it's like, well, now I have to be really careful with earrings. Why is it that some earrings are okay and other earrings are not okay? So it's like, oh, all right, let's just take earrings off the list. You know, then it's like, how about bracelets? Well, I'm so thin that my wrists are teeny, teeny, tiny. And so I have to really figure out, okay, what kind of bracelets can I wear? You know, so that I can be able to adjust them because they don't make bracelets this small. And if they're too big, they'll fall off my hand, you know? So I was like, okay, well, necklaces, I can do necklaces, you know, necklaces, that's pretty harmless, right? And, you know, then, you know, this necklace is pretty, you know, not, you know, it, it doesn't really bother me too much. But I noticed that when I put on a different chain, that's maybe a little bit heavier, a little bit um, bigger, kind of like bothers my neck, like my skin is very sensitive and all of that. So this is sort of, you know, my point here is to show you that even, you know, we do try, those of us who are sick and those of us who have disabilities, we do try to find things that we enjoy. We do try to, you know, get into something. And, and I'm not just talking about like, you know, journaling or that kind of thing. You know, we're like everybody else. We want to enjoy clothes and food and, you know, jewelry and hobbies and things like that. Um, and unfortunately, there are all these weird little things, you know, I didn't, I didn't realize that I was that sensitive to a chain on my neck. You know what I mean? Um, you know, you only start realizing these things as you start playing around, you know, as I've started to play with jewelry, then I start to see, oh, my neck is kind of sensitive. And like, I keep, you know, touching the chain and it's irritating my skin and that kind of thing. Um, another thing that I had gotten into was, uh, especially during quarantine, was painting my nails. Um, I was not a, you know, I would paint my nails every now and then. Um, I didn't have a, you know, big collection of nail polish or anything like that. And I started really getting into it and buying nail polish and, you know, just, I grew my collection, you know, I like tripled my collection of nail polish. And I try to get, you know, the like toxin free nail polish and, you know, cause I don't know, I guess I assumed it would be better for me. And so I really got into painting my nails for, you know, for the last, you know, year, probably year and a half. And then I recently had a sinus issue, which I think I talked about in, a, in another video. So now I'm afraid of painting my nails. It wasn't because of painting my nails. It was another situation, something else, some other odor in the house. But now I feel like, okay, well now the, here, this is a new thing. You know, I never had this kind of sinus. Um, I think it's like called rhinitis, rhinitis, I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's some kind of nasal irritation. I don't, I don't think it was an allergic reaction, but then again, I have, I really don't, I'm not sure. Um, and we all know nail polish, even if it doesn't have toxins or whatever, it still smells. It has a very, very strong smell. And so I just, you know, I would just have a good time just sitting, you know, I would sit in my chair in my room and just you know, I, I have this like clipboard and I would put the clipboard under my hand and start painting my nails. And it, I don't know, for some reason, it was sort of, I want to say it was kind of relaxing. It's almost sort of like a mindless activity um, where I don't really have to think, you know, it's, it gives me something to focus on, but I really don't have to think hard to do it. And after the sinus issue, 
I was like, this is one less thing that I'm going to be able to enjoy. Like now if I paint my hands, I come up here to this room. This is upstairs. I don't paint my hands or paint my nails in my room anymore. I do it here. I open the windows. I have the door open. I have a mask. I'm now wearing a mask to paint my nails. It's no longer something that I enjoy. And that's that's an example of how your your illness can take something, you know, that you previously enjoyed and make it into something that you're now almost afraid of. Um, and that's how I am with food as well, because I don't know what I'll react to. Um, you know, so I've just limited my diet to the point where I know that the things that I eat, I'm not going to have much of an issue with. Um, you know, I don't I don't want this to be sort of a depressing um a depressing video because I know it seems very uh, kind of how can I say it like like um, the word isn't coming to me right now but hopeless and it really isn't hopeless what what I've learned to do is I have learned to sort of work around things um, so for example when it comes to bracelets I've learned that if the bracelet is made of links I can you know, clasp it onto the links and not necessarily onto the, the clasp and I can adjust it to my size. So now I know if I'm going to buy a bracelet, I know what kind of bracelet I need to buy in order to sort of adjust it to fit me. Um, with earrings, it's been trial and error, but I have found earrings that don't irritate my ears. And, you know, I'm sort of learning, you know, which, which types or what to look for so that I'll know in advance whether or not they'll irritate my ears. So you you start, um, and you might find this with a lot of chronically ill people, we start to, um, the learning curve gets smaller as things go on. And the very beginning of my chronic illness, it was a huge learning curve where, you know, it's trial and error. It's, you know, you sometimes make yourself sick because you, you didn't know or you just wanted to try this and see. Now it's like I learn very quickly you know, what to look at, what to, what things to focus on so that I know whether something is going to affect me badly or whether it's going to agree with me. And with jewelry, it's sort of been that kind of a situation. Um, so I have been able to find a few pieces that work well with me. Um, and yes, like I said, it's been a whole day that my ear has been burning and itching, but I, I kind of, learned something big from that so now I kind of know what jewelry I can wear and what jewelry I need to stay away from so it's not all bad you know do I wish that I didn't have any of these issues yeah I absolutely you know would give anything to, to just be able to wear any kind of jewelry eat whatever I want but you know you you do become uh, adaptable when you have all of these issues and one of the hardest things is to just not let it get you down. Like I was like, okay, well that earring irritated my ear, but I know now which earrings are not going to irritate my ears. So I can look for that. I can specifically look for that. And, um, you know, when, when I order something online, so you, you do sort of ha sort of have to look at the silver lining and I'm not a big proponent of that. I, I am not, you know, one of these toxic positivity people. If you're, if you're not in a good headspace and you just want to be mad, I say, go for it. Um, I, I can't stand it when people are like, well, you just have to look at the bright side or, you know, stop being so negative. That's something that, that a lot of sick people often get when they say, oh, I can't do this, 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 and this. You know, it's it's your attitude. It's not your actual physical limitations. And it's and it is your physical limitations. There are physical limitations with almost everything, even something as benign as jewelry. Uh, so, you know, it's it's brought me to a greater understanding of my own body. But I hope this video brings non sick people to a greater understanding of maybe your sick family and friends and, you know, sometimes we tend to come across as very negative, um, like we don't like anything, we don't enjoy anything. And it's not that we, that it's just our attitude that we're just like the, you know, negative Nellies. It's the fact that we really can't, you know, and, and if we do try to, you know, there are consequences, you know, there are consequences to having, you know, a Snickers bar. It just depends on whether I want to suffer those consequences or, or not. So 
I hope this video helps, like I said, particularly people that are, are not sick, that deal with sick family members or friends. Um, and have a little bit of compassion and patience. Um, if people, if, if they tell you, I don't want to do this or I can't do this, don't push the issue. And definitely don't tell them that's just a negativity situation or you just need to adjust your attitude because we can adjust our attitudes all we want. Our bodies are not going to change. You know, they're not going to change. They're not going to be like, oh, wow, she's in a better mood today. So I'm going to be more agreeable. Your body is always going to be the way it's going to be, um, regardless of what your mind, you know, where your mind is on that given day. So that's my video for today. Um, I don't know how many more videos I'll have for you guys, but um, stay tuned and I will see you again soon.